Hey there! Today we're going to talk about exercise and working out. Welcome to your lesson for a Happy Hormone Group. I am Coach Danny, and today we're going to talk about moving your body. Moving your body. Moving your body is important, but here are a couple things. We want to make sure that we're understanding this when you are looking at this lesson today, okay? Because I get questions on this. Now, yes, I am a fitness professional. I have been part of the health and fitness industry for 25 years, as well as a certified holistic health coach. And that's why my approach is holistic. I'm working with naturopath and functional medicine, and that is my passion to help you. So, you know, really specializing in autoimmune diseases and hormones and helping people with weight loss and understanding how to support their body the best way possible during different things that we're going through. Now, for me, what I like to, you know, always share with you guys is understanding that, you know, I'm in my 40s. I'm a mom of two. I have three autoimmune diseases. I definitely have had my flare-ups. Um, I have psoriasis. I have Meniere's. Um, a lot of people know psoriasis because it affects the skin and it's a little bit more noticeable. Um, when I've had bad flares, it's been all over my chest and all over my my back and all the way down my neck. I currently still have it in my ears and my scalp. Um, and I want you to think about, you know, maybe some things that you have had pop up here or there and just really weren't sure what that was in regards to your skin. That's your immune system talking to you. And um, I've had spots, you know, on my face and on my eye pop up here or there. In the past, I've had it all over my forearms and my legs and have been able to get those areas to clear up. Meniere's is, um, affects your ear, so with the fluid and the vertigo and the balance and uh, ringing in your ears and pressure. So a lot of times I get a lot of pressure and my ears hurt and I'll get flares in there and that can even trigger headaches. Um, not fun, <laughs> right? And number three, because I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, oh my goodness, when was that? Like 2010? Um, and, you know, so that's been a while, but um, found out I, because I'm already autoimmune, that um, I definitely am Hashimoto's. So that is the autoimmune disease of the thyroid, of hypothyroidism. Some people deal with Graves' disease, which is the hyper form, but you can also, when you're Hashimoto, you can have both. You can go between hypo and hyper, which is common. And then also remember that there's different things that can happen with your thyroid in regards to um, goiters and nodules and things like that and cancer. And um, it's very important to make sure that you're connected with the really, really good functional medicine doctor, not just an endocrinologist, but a functional medicine doctor has the approach of treating your thyroid to find the root cause versus just wanting to remove or burn out your thyroid. Um, so some really amazing doctors that I follow and uh, I work with um, Dr. Sarah Zielsdorf in, um, she actually has a couple of locations with with where she works out of in um, Morris, Illinois and Romeoville, Illinois. And then she's looking to add in Geneva, which is where she lives. And so she is amazing and she has um, a nurse practitioner that works with her that will see the kids. And that is Roxana. And um, you can usually get in to see Roxana sooner, but um, Dr. Zielsdorf is amazing and her approach on the thyroid is very different than most people. And um, also there's a couple different functional um, doctors that are, are chiropractors that are getting into the functional medicine side of healing and more of the holistic side as well. But definitely do not compare to Dr. Zielsdorf being an MD, but, um, but definitely is a good place to start if you need to go get blood work and you can't get in right away and things like that. And um, Dr. Scott Beyer through Integrative Brain and Body is very good to get started with as well. And why am I talking about this when this is a lesson about moving your body? 
Well, the reason is, is because what I have found is that being somebody that loves fitness and has been a group fitness instructor for 25 years and a personal trainer is that exercise can be taken to the extreme very easily and we can be doing too much exercise or we can be doing too little exercise. So remember I told you because you're part of this group that you get to learn more about me and um, I like to share a lot of information in regards to my journey. So for years when I was teaching, I would teach all different times, morning, afternoon, and evening. Literally when I was younger, I would probably teach about maybe five hours a day, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the day. But isn't that crazy? Um, that's really how it was at that time. You know, and then as I started getting better and older and learning more skills and looking at what was going on with my body, um, I, you know, I would bring that down a little bit to teach maybe one or two classes so many times, you know, during the week, one day on, one day off, but probably still too much. And I would do my own workouts as well. And I found that when I would do my own workouts, it helped me to be stronger, I would feel better, and I actually would teach better because it helped me to keep my body more balanced versus just relying on teaching a fitness class for um, keeping me in shape. Because the instructor, that is not our workout. That is for you guys that are taking the class. And that's one thing I always try to teach instructors. You teaching a class is not your own workout. Um, you need to have your own for you, otherwise you end up very imbalanced and um, way too much cardio, depending on what you're teaching or what you're taking. So this lesson is for you guys to, to kind of understand that cardio can be um, way too much, especially if you're dealing with hormones and you're dealing with a thyroid condition. You can actually, even with autoimmune, make things worse and, and cause a lot of flare-ups flare, flare -ups for you. And it's just much harder for you to recover. So that's really what I started noticing is that when I would teach at night, I would feel very, very sick so many hours after because my adrenals would kick out the adrenaline and you get that adrenaline rush right that's what they do you, you get that adrenaline rush and it's like I'm on this high and I feel so good and then I would crash and I would literally be sick like all night like migraine sick stomach feeling like I'm gonna throw up and sick until the next day I was like what is going on with this so I thought all right I'm just gonna stop teaching at night and then what I found was it started happening when I was teaching during the day too. And I was like, no, this can't be happening to me. But it was. So I literally started, you know, trying to look at like what I needed to do supplement wise to help my body and, um, you know, recover faster, not have so many migraines triggered. And I did pretty good there for a while. I found intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting helped me for a while. But then I started having more crazy blood sugar crashes and, a horrible flare came on that I just could not get out of or feel better. So I had to give up um, teaching group exercise for quite a long time and found that, you know, my adrenals needed healing because if you are pushing too much of your cardio and not allowing your body to recover, how is anything going to function properly? Okay, so there's a difference between um, just thinking that you have to change your exercise, but understanding there's a root cause, there's a reason why this is going on. So it's not just, well, let me change the way that I'm working out, but it's getting to the root cause of what's going on in the inside of your body and why this is happening. So for example, you can be having that hormone imbalance, you could be having issues with your adrenals, you could be having issues with autoimmune and not even realize that that's what is going on inside of you and also the effects on the heart with too much cardio. So this is a lesson about just starting to get you to kind of examine how are you working out right now. You might be on the other side. You might be where you're not even doing anything, right? So this is about supporting your hormones and supporting your body the best that we can. So we really want to think about, um, we want to think about supporting Hang on, I just lost this. We want to think about supporting all of these things the best that we can, and that's what's important. 
So if I'm asking you to think about, um, you know, how much exercise are you doing right now? How much, um, how much are you not how much are you not getting in? All of those things. It, it's, it's kind of interesting to focus on the intensity level that you have when you're working out, the, um, the duration, and all of those things. Okay, I'm trying to get back to my notes here. One thing left, there it is. Okay, so with this lesson, you're going to think about how many times a week are you working out right now? How long are you working out each time you work out? And what is the intensity that you're using? Then I want you to take these tips and I want you to see what little changes you can make with that. Okay, so if it's nothing at all, you're going to start adding a little bit in and build up to these amounts. And if it's way too much, you're going to start cutting back a little bit and doing the better uh, process of working out to help your body. Okay, so exercise. We want to sweat and we want to have fun, but we also want to have good movement that gets our lymphatic system moving and gets our blood flowing and help that sweat to move the waste out of our body. Okay, so sometimes, for example, when I was really flared, I could get out in the sun and get warm to sweat. I could go into a sauna and get warm and sweat, and I could do more restorative workouts like really practicing on meditation with breathing and holding some yoga poses and stretches just to get to my body to, to start to move. Because when I was in a flare, I was in so much pain from head to toe that literally just a little movement was excruciating. And that was at my highest point where I should have been in the hospital. Um, so this is what I tell you. I knew I wanted to get my blood flowing, I wanted to help my lymphatic system, and I wanted to help my body get that waste out as much as possible. So it was just a little bit of the stretching and the moving and getting my body to sweat to feel better. Okay, so ideally you're looking at getting about 30 minutes of daily movement. Okay, so you just want to get that body moving. If it's going for a nice walk, if it's getting some stretching in, getting your body to have a, some somewhat of a sweat. And then when you're looking at um, how many days of what you're doing, you can put this as your goal. Let's say two to three days a week, you're going to do something that's called a HIT. This is called high intensity interval training. I don't want you to be afraid of the name of high intensity interval training, but um, be aware that if you're still working on healing your adrenals and you're busting out like a half hour, an hour of straight hard cardio, that's going to be very difficult to recover from. Where HIT training is different. HIT training is a shorter period of time where you're working on high intensity for so many seconds or maybe minutes and then you, you rest a little bit and then you repeat it. So you're taking a shorter amount of time, you're working at that point where you're making your body um, stressed good, <laughs> it has that good stress, a sweat and then you recover from it versus trying to, you know, run for an hour on the treadmill or 45 minutes of this high, 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 high cardio workout. It's very different results are given to the body as well. We also call this burst training where you're doing something and then you kind of bring it down and then you repeat it again. And maybe your, your high intensity interval training is going to just be 10 minutes in the beginning and then maybe 15 minutes. And I really would say no more than, than 30 minutes is needed for that. And you can blend it with a little bit of weight training, some, some stretches, and maybe a little um, cardio burst where um, you, know, you can use your own body for so many different things, which is phenomenal. And then we want to look at maybe two days of strength training by himself and two to three days of yoga mind-body exercise. So for me, when I got back into teaching, that's where I went with the class was more of a yoga mind-body exercise class where I'm formulating this into teaching everybody proper alignment with the body, muscle activation, 
and working with form and technique and breath control, stretching, flexibility and strength all blended in together in an hour class, but hitting all of these pinpoints. So we're warming up the body properly, we're working certain phases for so many minutes, and then we have a nice stretch and then we have relaxation for the last few minutes on the floor. So um, that's really what I needed to get into. And then I personally love to do <clears throat> resistance training really not a lot of cardio um, and that's where I see the best results with my body and my shape and keeping myself healthy so I wanted to just give this lesson to you guys today in about 15 minutes to talk to you about where you are at right now with your health where you are at right now with your movement and what are some simple tweaks that you can do so I want you to comment below and let me know that where you at right now with your exercise and what is one thing that maybe you need to change or, or add into your routine. All right, I will see you in the next lesson. Have a great day.